Hello everybody. During today's class we are going to begin the study of the electric field and in this first introductory lesson what we are going to do is to focus on the study of electrification phenomena, what is the origin of these electricization phenomena through the charge and what differentiation we have in the materials that we find in nature that we can classify basically in two large groups in conductors and insulators. If we stop to think about the great quantity of interactions that are acting on the bodies and that can modify their state of movement, we can think that there is a great quantity, variety of them, but all of them in fact can be grouped in four great groups. The gravitational interaction, the weakest of them, the electromagnetic one that is present in great quantity of technological applications, the strong nuclear interaction responsible for the atomic nuclei to remain united, although they are integrated by particles of the same charge, the protons together with particles with neutral charge, the neutrons and the weak nuclear interaction responsible for the beta disintegration by the sun, and that reaches us, therefore, the energy from it. We are going to focus from now on on the study of electromagnetism. An electromagnetic interaction is present in a great variety of different environments that we can find. It is responsible for the interactions that exist between atoms and molecules, but also in other very different areas, such as all the technological applications that we are used to visualize as daily, as in lighting, in telecommunications, in computing, in different areas. Traditionally, the study of electromagnetism has been divided into two blocks, on the one hand associated with electrical effects, and on the other hand associated with magnetic effects. Even one of the discoverers of the relationship between these two electrical and magnetic effects, Hans Christian Oersted, was a professor of electricity, magnetism, and galvanism. And it was not until the second half of the 19th century when they found the relationship between these two types of electrical and magnetic effects. What was found is that in fact the two effects, its origin is exactly the same. One of the properties of matter, the charge possessed by the materials. Actually, the electrical interactions and the two types of interactions that we know exist and that we know, attractive electrical interactions and repulsive electrical interactions, were already known since the origin of the ancient Greeks. And actually, the word that we have of electrical has a Greek origin. It comes from the word amber, the amber stones that have this beautiful appearance. We know that when two bodies that are charged with the same sign are close to each other, the interactions that are felt are of repulsion, while when they are in the environment, a body charged with some positive charges, for example, and the other negative, the effects that we observe are the effects of repulsion. These effects were also studied through electrostatic balances, like the one we have here, and whose scheme we have been seeing through this simulation. One way to see also these types of interactions is simply, and many of you will have done the experience of, well, from small pieces of paper, well, to analyze that if I do friction with the material, if I take, for example, this balloon that I have here, and I bring it close to these little pieces, it seems that I don't observe any type of interaction, nothing is seen here, but if I take a ball of wool and I rub the surface of the balloon a little bit, we immediately see that an interaction appears that we didn't have before and we couldn't observe. I immediately observe, here we can see it, that these little pieces do feel these interactions. And although they are quite chubby, quite big, I can lift them up with these interactions. The origin of the electromagnetic interactions are the charges. And to explain well how they are produced, we have to take into account how matter is formed. Matter is formed by atoms. In their nuclei, we have the positively and neutrally charged particles, the neutrons and protons, and around them, the cloud of electrons orbiting around those nuclei. The fundamental unit of charge is going to be that of the electron, minus 1.602177 times 177 minus 19 coulombs, the coulomb being the unit of electric charge in the international system. We see, therefore, the order of magnitude of 10 to the minus 19 coulombs that a single electron would have. In the following lessons, the convention that we will follow will be to use the blue color for the negative particles. For the electrons would be yellow for the neutral ones and red for the positive particles. 
We see here that the matter, when interpreting how it is formed, what we have are constituent blocks where, in quite determined positions, we would find the atomic nucleus and around them all the electrons orbiting, as we can see a little bit in this simulation of the electrons. And all of them would form that blue cloud of electrons around the atomic nuclei. We know that the charge in materials is quantized. And that this charge is an integer number of electrons and being from one to millions of electrons that we have in different materials. And this electric charge is conserved, that is to say, it passes from one material to another. It is not destroyed. We have here an image of how the different constituent blocks can give us the formation of materials. In this case, we have an image of iron pyrite with those blocks in cubic form that are annexed to each other. And to see the great effects that we can obtain and the properties with which we can work, thanks to being able to extract in a relatively simple way the electrons and pass from one body to another of the materials, we will see it with a charge generator that is the van der Graaff generator, and we are going to see it with a real experience here. This is a van der Graaff generator which basically consists of a ribbon that now when I start the motor, it is going to be in continuous friction with different elements of this van der Graaff generator. I'm going to generate loads that are going to be distributed all over the structure and that will... If I put this sphere, hollow sphere, these charges being of the same sign, all those that are generated will pass to the surface of the sphere and will occupy all of them. To see the effects that we can get, in turn, I am going to help me with this little doll where we have released one of its braids. We put it like a safety belt so that it doesn't stay on when we start the motor. And we are going to see what is going to happen with the charges that are accumulating continuously in the metallic sphere. We start up our from the graph generator. It has been clearly seen how the charges that were accumulated in the metallic sphere pass to the different fibers of the hair. Even when I approach my hand, the interactions are noticed. They try to pass the electrons to my body. And we see how those forces of attraction exist immediately when trying to migrate the charges towards me. We leave the van der Graaff generator. Continuing with what we were talking about, materials, depending on how much or how little it costs us to separate the electrons from the matter, we will find insulating materials, such as this piece of methacrylate or aluminum, materials that are very conductive. What will this nomenclature depend on? Well, on how much or how little it will cost us to remove the electrons from the materials and that simply depends on the energies that we have to communicate to the electrons so that they pass from what is called the valence band to the conduction band of the different materials. This is the basis of many, many devices that we use in optoelectronics applications, in different technological applications. Here I have, for example, a tiny little solar panel. The basis of this solar panel is that it is formed through these plates that you see here. These silicon wafers, which would be a semiconductor material, which would be in the middle point between insulators and conductors, and like this we have a lot of applications. Summarizing everything we have seen, we see how we can handle the electrical properties of materials. The basis of which is that we are going to be able to change electrons from one material to another, and different types of interactions are established as to how the bodies are arranged. We have the two types of interactions and how easy or difficult it is to remove those electrons make us divide the materials into conductors, insulators or semiconductors. We will go deeper into the electric field in the next lessons. Thank you very much.